In the previous lecture, you learned how the parent node property holds a reference to the parent node of a given element. But there's also a reference to the previous sibling stored in the previous element sibling property. Now, the other question you might be having is why there's element in the property name? In other words, why it's not called previous sibling? Well, there's a previous sibling property which is older and has better browser support compared to previous element sibling. However, the reason for avoiding previous sibling will be easier to see in the console. Let's look at an example. To code along with me, first download the course folder from the link in the description below and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called JavaScript DOM. Then open the index.html file in the browser. Here I also open the JavaScript console. In the index.html file, remember to link app.js file. Now in the JavaScript console, let's define a variable called li and store the reference to the last list item. So I'll type let li assignment operator document dot query selector all and pass in li. This will give us all the list items, but I want the last list item. So I'll type a set of square brackets and a pass in index three. And this will give us the last item in the list. In this case, it's the one that contains Ford. I'll press enter. Now, if I type li in the console and press enter, you see that it's the last list item. If I mouse over it, you see that it's highlighted on the page. So now if I type li dot previous sibling, press enter, and we see that it contains something called hash text. And if I mouse over it, nothing is highlighted. So now let's check its text content property. So I'll type li dot previous sibling dot text content. I'll press enter. And here we see that it's an empty string with a new line character. Now let's do one more check. So I'll type li dot previous sibling dot previous sibling and I'll press enter. This time I get another list item. If I mouse over it, you see that it's the one with the Honda inside. So what is going on here? Well, previous sibling gets you the previous document node, which isn't necessarily an HTML element. In this case, it's an empty string that sits between the two list items and helps to format the HTML document. So since you can't count on previous sibling to give you the previous HTML element, previous element sibling is the best way to go. So now let's look at an example on how to use the previous element sibling. Let's implement an up button next to each element and clicking on the up button will move that element up the list. So first in the index.html file, I'll add a button just before the remove button. And the button will say up. I'll do the same for others. So now that we have multiple buttons here, let's apply class on each one so that we can easily select them in our handler. I'll give the first button the class up. And the second button the class remove. And I'll do the same for others. I'll save the chains. Next in the app.js file, we need to modify our click handler to only remove an element if the target's class name is remove. So we can use an if statement for that. Inside this if block, I'll wrap the references to the list items and parent UL in an if statement. Then in the condition, we'll check the target's class name like this, event.target 
dot class name strictly equal to remove. So next, clicks to our new up buttons will come into this handler too. So we just need to set a similar if statement to check for the class name up. But once we make our selections, how do we move our target element into place? So far we have only learned about append child method, which places the node as the last sibling of the element's children. So for this, we can use the insert before method, which inserts a node before the target element. Here on the MDN page, looking at the syntax for the insert before method, it shows that we need three nodes to use this method. We'll call the method on the parent node and passing in two arguments. The first argument is the new element or the element we want to place. And the second argument is the reference element or the element we want our new node to go before. Now there are a couple of things to note here. One is that if the element you want to place is already in the DOM, you don't need to remove it first. That will be taken care of for you before the element is mowed into place. And the other thing to note is that there is no such a method called insert after. Now let's get back to the app.js file and look at an example on how to use the insert before method. First I'll copy this if statement and paste it right below. Then we can modify this code to handle clicks to our new up buttons. So this condition will check if the target class name is up or not. So I'll update this to up and we still need to get a reference to the parent of the button, the list item and we also need the parent of that, the UL element. So we need to keep these two lines of code. But we are not removing any child here so I'll delete the remove child method from this block. And also we want to move the target list item up so we need to get its previous sibling as a reference which we can get with previous element sibling. So I'll type const previous li assignment operator li dot previous element sibling. And then we'll call the insert before method on the ul element and pass in the list item to move as the first argument. In this case, it's li. Then the previous sibling as the second argument. In this case, it's previous li. All right, I'll save the chains. Refresh the page. And there we see the up buttons. I'll try to click each up button. And looks like it's working. But let's see what happens when we click the up button on the item at the top of the list. It goes to the bottom. Well, this is because of how insert before works. And we can fix this with an if statement. So if an element is already a first child, the previous element sibling will be null. So we can test that null value in an if statement by saying, if previous li then run this ul.insert before method inside this block. And now the insert will only run if there is a previous sibling. I'll save the change. Refresh the page. Okay, it works. Good. 